Oh man, you guys ready to get angry about a whole bunch of stuff that's like a huge problem to us because we're privileged? Like the old days, the doomsday shit's coming back. Okay, first article, Amazon. I don't know about this stuff, but people use these things apparently to make their lives easier. So Amazon has their Echo. It's a little device that you can talk to and it basically, it's, it's a little pod that harvests all your data while being very helpful. And uh, there's a few articles out on the internet and I think they're missing the point here. Um, they're saying things like, oh, Amazon wants to be your new uh, like fashion helper or something like that. And Motherboard got it really close to what's going on, but it's more diabolical than even that. So they, Amazon wants to put a camera in your, not yet. Let me get through the facts first before that <laughs> fucking thing comes over here and takes over my mind. Um, Amazon wants to be in your bedroom and they want to know what you're doing. So they've developed a new device that's sort of just the same thing, the Echo. They put it in your bedroom and it allows you to create lookbooks with your clothes. And then it uses artificial intelligence to look at what you're wearing and compare it to maybe a few other things. You can take like, put on a few different outfits, then show the Echo and the Echo will be like, ah, you shouldn't be wearing those kind of stripes because it makes you look fat. You need to wear the other outfit. All right, and then, you know, it goes through an algorithm and an artificial intelligence. And it also is powered by some like fashion people who get in there and start to feed the machine. So here's what's gonna happen. First off, it's creating even more of a hive mind than we already have. Like right now you people, like you people, like right now people rely on things like magazines to tell them what to wear. What are they wearing? That's not a very Henry David Thoreau thing to say, is it? No, but you always like to do whatever everybody else is doing so you don't stand out, right? unless you want to be scary on a train and subway so you wear a trench coat and sunglasses. The real thing here, and this is freaking diabolical, Amazon has found a way to harvest lots of interesting data, market things you know, to you that you may not be aware of, uh, but also cut out all the brands that don't want to pay. So imagine this, you've got a few different looks that you're trying to go for in Amazon, right? They're a marketing company. They're harvesting tons of data with this thing being in, in, in your bedroom or whatever. They've also, completely dodged any questions about what they were going to do with that data. When people directly asked them, hey, are you going to be selling this data to marketing companies? They were just like, uh, do you guys like basket football? We love basket football. It's wonderful. And people are like, what did you just say? That's not, that's not even a thing. Is that a thing? Yes, in Canada, it is a thing. Basket football. Right? So Amazon is really going to be making money from both ends while providing a service to make you happier. That's like the most diabolical thing I've ever heard of. You guys are going to be happy being like, look, I've got my lookbook and they're doing it all with the most powerful thing in the current universe, your ego, because you're going to be able to share these photos on the internet, photos of like, should I wear this or should I wear this? When really you're saying like, validate me, please validate me because my parents neglected me because they were the first generation that was off doing too many things for their children. And my kids are going to be raised by an iPod an iPad and some other eye things. So it's fine, right? You're neglecting your children too, you idiot. Uh, where are we right now? Let's move on to the next thing. So it's just completely diabolical. They're making money from the people who are paying to sell clothes to you. You're gonna be buying stuff from Amazon, therefore giving them money. And they're gonna be selling all your data and you're gonna be happy because it's preying upon your ego and you can share all your photos and feel better about yourself and you feel like it's a service because now you feel better about what you wear every single day because a goddamn thing on your desk said, you look good, go to work. Guys, the FCC is trying to dismantle Title II, so therefore net neutrality may not be a thing, and it looks like it's probably gonna go through because the Republicans are controlling everything, and they basically just wanna deregulate it. And if you're worried about, you know, deregulation, I know every time I mention the word deregulation, people are like, we need to get government out of all kinds of shit, and we need no regulations. Do you guys need any kind of reminder of what happens when you allow sociopaths to run major corporations and then just let them do whatever the fuck they want? Do you need a reminder? You should go watch a movie called Casino Jack in the United States of Money. It'll tell you what happened when they deregulated Guam. Basically created indentured servants over there. Um, as well as pretty much destroying the economy there. Fitbit is being used in a court case. And this is kind of interesting because, um, you know, wife was killed, shot with a gun, right? Boom, dead. Is that how it works? Anyway, the husband had a timeline that said that, you know, he got home and tussled with somebody and he was pinned down and then the wife was shot and killed at like 940 or something like that. Where are they? But then they looked at the Fitbit and the Fitbit said, oh no, she was at the YMCA when he said that he was being pinned down and then she got shot. She gets home like an hour later and uh, let me just skip to that part. Mike Galanos, this is sort of, I saw the headline earlier and I thought, wait, what, the fitness tracker? What the fitness tracker? It's interesting that they've used this in a case and uh, we'll have to see how this pans out, but 
It's kind of interesting that that device was on her, keeping a different timeline from what was actually said. China and Europe are building a base on the moon. Again, didn't they already do this like in the 60s and didn't tell anybody? The bottom line here with this is that um, space race is over. Everyone was like competing for like national pride of like who can, who can get to outer space. And that was really driving it more than the whole idea of exploration. It was very much a, a hubris, ego, put our dick on the table type thing and look at us, we're in space. But China and Europe, hats off to you guys. They've come together and said, listen, if we're gonna do this, uh, and we're gonna actually colonize space and go out there and make a base and then use that to, as a launch pad to other places in the, in the solar system universe, whatever, uh, we're gonna have to work together. And that's gonna be the next step. So the realization of that, to me, is just as big as actually going to outer space, working together. China doesn't really have a spot in the space station right now because us, the USA, we were worried about them uh, and their ideas of space in sort of a military way. You know, like creating space lasers and stuff. Don't we have space lasers? Why do we get mad when anyone else does what we do? We can have all the bombs. You can't have any bombs. We're the good guys. We can have space lasers. But if you guys want space lasers, I'm sorry, but your country colors are the wrong shade, I'm afraid. So some articles weren't opened here. An article about artificial wombs. An article about uh, Elon Musk and his new Synapse technology thing. So Elon Musk, he was actually creating, um, you know, he's trying to create a, a neural interface with computers mainly so that we uh, can keep up with artificial intelligence. We're gonna need to artificially intelligence ourselves, guys. Prevent Skynet. <laughs> yeah, we gotta prevent Skynet. Some other scientists have made an artificial womb. Now, the artificial womb is only really for, uh, you know, if you have a premature birth, you put that into this artificial womb bag thing that's, you know, got the amino acids or whatever the hell's in there, it allows it to breathe and, flow, you know, flow of blood and all that stuff and it can continue to develop. That's only stage, stage one, guys. What they're gonna do is eventually turn this into a scenario where they can create sort of little cocoons or eggs and, and develop from just an embryo. That's not too far in the future. They, they want us to think that it's farther in the future than it really is, but it's not. And when they're first born, they're gonna need an interface. Now, I'm not gonna say Elon Musk is evil here, but I believe that he can be, I guess, persuaded to allow them to use his technology. So imagine, they have a brand new baby, right? Babies are useless! Like, they're the most useless things on the planet. They're basically the same as old, drunk, bald people. Because they vomit, they can't stand up on their own, they wander around and shit themselves, and they're bald and, you know, they're... And they fall asleep everywhere. And they fall asleep everywhere. So, yeah, they're basically drunk, old, bald people. And we have to deal with that shit until they're old enough to do things on their own. But what if we had this neural interface? You could plug it up right from birth and immediately we have genius babies. You can also program in all the coordination and everything. All that's controlled by the brain. I mean, you'll have to develop the muscles a little bit, but you know, they're growing the little things. They can grow them with the correct muscles in place. You know, just beef them up a little bit. So on day one, they pop out neural interface, hey, you're a genius, think we can grow them bigger? That's like stage two. First off, we're gonna get really smart babies. So that may be the future of artificial intelligence. Growing a shell from which we will insert the artificial intelligence, or the actual intelligence. I don't know what it's gonna be. Artificial insemination of intelligence. This, these are not things that go together. These words don't go together. It is hot under there. Yeah. I was looking at that, uh, I was looking at that the, the thing about the, the, the lamb that they made. Mm -hmm. And all I can think about, like way back in the day, I used to work at McDonald's and the bags that the shake mix used to come it looks in. just like the it lamb was bag. That, yeah, it was that with like a tube coming out of it. So you could, so like the whole time I was just like, oh God, it's a milkshake bag. Like, the, uh. <laughs> I, I don't know, it creeped me out a little bit. I think it's interesting that they did this with lambs as well. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about the, uh, think about this, right? The yeah. lamb of God. Ooh. We are becoming gods. And this will be the first thing we create, the Lamb of God. Like that band. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat. The teen hacker, whose name is Adam Mudd, with two Ds, who made the DDoS attacking program called Titanium Stressor, has been sentenced to two years in prison for creating this really easy to use and relatively affordable, apparently, program that allowed people to just launch personalized DDoS attacks on just about whoever the fuck they wanted. It's responsible for multiple attacks, including on servers like Minecraft, Microsoft, and RuneScape, and it even like cost the company that made RuneScape like six million pounds or something like that to try to stop it. So anyways, this titanium stressor program is responsible for like 1.7 
million separate attacks, a bunch of which Adam Mudd even admitted to carrying out himself, including attacks against his college and things like that. His lawyer said, well, he was bullied. And because he was bullied, he found himself retreating into this cyber world more often and trying to gain acceptance, which according to Mud, it wasn't about getting the money, it wasn't about that, it was just getting some like online street cred within his online community. So all this is the result of bullying. Can I rant for like about 20 seconds? Yeah. So guys, and I don't want to like hate on anybody out there because I know a lot of, uh, a lot of the people that, that watch us have been, you know, involved in DDoS attacks against, mm -hmm. you know, different games, different companies, different game companies. Us, in fact, we've been the victim of several ongoing um, DDoS attacks. And, you know, I understand your world is really small. You've, re you've, you've, you've gone in and, and basically closed out everything around you. Maybe the world around you is fucking hateful. And maybe your teacher was hateful. Maybe your school was hateful. Maybe the bully picked on you a lot. You're in this microcosm and these things are so important to you. You've lost all perspective on the rest of the world. They're so important that they produce righteous anger and you're willing to fight for these things. But if you step back and just look at it, it's really, really silly. There's like actual shit happening in the world. There's actual problems happening in the world. There's, there's people who don't have enough food. There's people who are getting blown up every day. Mm -hmm. But because of a few circumstances, you're so warped that all you care about is this one Thing that pissed you off on the internet and you care about it so much that you're willing to disrupt their business their livelihood cost them millions of dollars in the case of, of, of some of these games and the livelihood of all the other people that are using it at the time yeah yeah there's a lot of people who want to have fun so you're mm -hmm. fucking this up for a lot of people because something did you wrong I'm sorry but your perspective is fucked and if you stand back and look at it you'll realize it's silly so I don't want to like off as being like, hey, screw you guys. I want to be like, hey, listen, step back and look at this and realize that there's bigger things going on. This is awesome. I'm <laughs> so this this covers you tabletop people, this covers you video game players and stuff. Sega has made an actual power fist from Warhammer 40k that the Space Marines use, the ones that can actually like, you know, were used to do damage against orcs, spelled with K, you know, all the things like that in, in the 40k games, as well as a bunch of the ones that were, you know, in the video games and stuff like this. So the Power Fist, well, it's not you can, something you can just throw on your wrist and use. It's actually hooked up to like a full camera rig and everything like that, but it actually, you know, has the pressurized everything in it that can go and 3,000 PSI. I want to punch so many things with this. Oh, uh, if man. there's ever a way to get a, get a hold of one of these, it's never going to be the same. There are just going to be power fist marks all over Portland. <laughs> I would love this if, since Sega made these things, I would love it if every time you, you shot it off, they brought back the old, you know, like, uh, uh, Sega opening. Sega! Sega! <laughs> Sega! Oh, <laughs> not, not, the, not the slow. Sega! Sega. <laughs> no, that would be very... <laughs> When you're it's, punching something really slowly. It's not gonna like caress you, it's gonna hit you. It's like, Sega! All right, next thing up on the list. Yes. Okay, so the company Soap Studio has made the Batman Cerebral Combat Trainer. I wish it was the Batman Cerebral board that looked like a bat knife, mm -hmm. but then performed like a cerebral board from Torok. That would be pretty cool. So anyways, this company has made a machine that you can control the character on the screen, who happens to be the Cape Crusader, uh, you can control him with your mind. You can control Batman with your mind. <laughs> Which is super duper cool. What it does is it actually breaks down the five different waves that are produced by your brain uh, and measures them based off of like their intensity level, your emotional state, and how fast your eyes are moving and blinking to help you actually control things. So part of it will be like a target will come up on the screen and you'll have to blink when you want this thing to fire off and stuff like that. But you're actually able to just sit there and think your way into being Batman, which is super freaking cool. Uh, we're actually going to be getting one of these to play around with. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for us brain controlling Batman. There's been some technology like this in the past several years uh, and, and it never really caught on. Um, it's usually just something fun that someone developed. This mm -hmm. seems like maybe one step farther in that direction, mm -hmm. but I mean, it could still be a gimmick, but maybe interesting headlines. Batman's Rebel Combat Trainer. <laughs> There you go. Like, those are all just sport sold. All the words I need to hear. <laughs> oh, Anything else? I'm though? in the middle of a game over here, so I'm gonna go back and play. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me uh, let me okay. check that out first. Actually, okay. yeah. Right now, what? Uh, let's see what everybody's playing uh, immediately. All right, what are you playing? 
I'm playing Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. So you're just marking wall right now, right? Yeah, I'm just make I'm just seeing how many enemies I have in the area. Sounds like there's a helicopter coming in. Oh shit. Yeah, really pretty graphics too. Yep. It's fun and and so it's like, you know, your standard kind of snipery game. So are these like missions, or are you uh, like where you have one mission and it's full level, or is it like... Uh, it's an open world game, so you have missions that you can follow, but you can also just kind of go on your own adventures and just uh, go sniping random people if you feel like it. Oh, eh, whatever, I'll just start sniping some people. Yeah, let's do some snipes. Yeah, but this is very particular, like you have to do the whole... You know, adjust. It's not just like, oh, adjust, this guy's in my sight. I actually a... have to adjust for wind speed. Holy I shit. have to hold my breath and I have to adjust my reticle here to make sure I'm within the right thing. So I'm... that's actually pretty cool. Oh yes, good. Oh no. Uh... He had a family. Had. <laughs> And it doesn't cu it doesn't do the cutscene shots like this every time. Only when you're awesome. So, <laughs> only when you hit him in the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I I'm really enjoying this game because I like that kind of the sniper feel of it. I like having to actually think about things most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> As you're blowing up barrels. As I'm just blowing up barrels. Yeah. Like this is one of the, this is a stealth game. This is a game where you have to like. Think about what you're doing and think about who you're gonna set off here and stuff. Everyone's bald in this game. I haven't figured this out yet. Um, Maybe it's the order of uh, bald, nasty people. It should be. I guess. I don't know. Oh, there's another guy. How is the gameplay when you're just running around with like a machine gun or something? It's good. It, I mean, there there are parts of the game where you just run through and you just like have to annihilate groups Mow of people at people. the same time and just you know. But the the game. You know, there are multiple ways to solve every mission. You can sit up here and snipe everybody if you wanted. You could just, you know, roll a car down into here and just start blowing up people if you wanted. You know, you could just run in with an assault rifle and get tagged a bunch of times but still kill a bunch of people. It's totally up to you. But you can even do things like move bodies away so that people don't ca catch them and things like that. And it's all about catching people off guard. You get, um, you know, you get a drone. I'll show you the drone here. You get a drone that you can pilot around things and do recon with feels much more tight than ghost recon and it stays in first person the whole time it doesn't switch from third to first but if you like stealth fps shooters not ones that you just like you know run out balls out hitting everybody and stuff like this this game is pretty fun yeah <laughs> like we weren't going to do this question that's why it's all crumply because i really didn't want to talk about g2a but Hey, what the hell, let's talk about G2A. This is from Radar Donok from the forum. All hell Doug, he says, all right. I've never done this before, but my question is, what do you think about the G2, G2A and Total Biscuit situation? Recently bought Mortal Kombat X from G2A and had a great experience, but I'm aware there are some shady sellers on the website and I'd like to hear what you think about it. God, I didn't really want to get into this junk. I don't use G2A myself for the moral reasons, but let's, let's really kind of break this down. The big problem here is that they won't divulge what the hell it is that they're doing and you know, Gearbox, they were gonna work together with them on that sponsored deal. And uh, Gearbox is, you know, huge company. And once Total Biscuit sort of uh, turned up the heat, Gearbox immediately was like, whoa, 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 let's not make a PR mistake here. But at the same time, it could have been a good opportunity for them. So they did a, a good thing for PR, and at the same time, they did a good thing for the community by telling G2A, listen, give us some clarification here. Talk about what you're doing. Talk about you know all the, these allegations and stuff like that, and then we'll we'll do business. And G2A's response was like, nope, not happening. So G2A guys, they know that there's some like shady gray market or stolen serial numbers on their website. They are turning a blind eye, which to me, since they're running the service, is the same as enabling this kind of shit. So that's why I don't use them personally, even though you can get some really cheap and good deals. Uh, I feel that it's bad for the developers. It's not the same as like, okay, so you have also have pirates out there, right? And we have another moral area here where people are stealing games. I feel like pirates are less likely to buy than people who are on GTA throwing money at it because they're actually jumping through a hoop and spending money. So I'm not saying it's worse than piracy, but those are, I think, I feel like those customers are actually more potentially uh, paying customers than the people who pirate the games. So it's sort of a, an area that I really, really like to stay away from. So G2A is not a company I will I will buy uh, a game from. I don't I just don't like the way they, they do business. There could be something else going on in the background. Like there's some conspiracy out there, like who these guys are 
are actually just a front and there's some people behind them and they're just running the business but uh, they're doing whatever they're told. Who knows, maybe a bunch of nerds get themselves into some trouble. And there's a bunch of bullies involved. And then pretty soon they're going to be DDoS attacking everyone. All right, there's some more questions here, but I think we'll save that for the inbox uh, episode. Want to ask a question? You have two different options now. You can send an email to inbox at crit.tv. You should do that right now. I will solve your marriage problems. I will fix your broken toaster. And I'll help you with your computer problems. The other way to uh, message us is to go over to our uh, official Crit TV Twitter page. It's at official Crit TV. And then you just put a uh, hashtag and it's uh, inbox.exe. So hashtag that, ask us a question. And what's wrong with my speak uh, hole here? Also, grab a t-shirt, guys. We got some awesome ones, like the Chilby Hell to Bay is, is good, especially for this episode. And over there in the store, got some new stuff coming in soon. I really need to rest this thing. It's broken I can't speak correctly. All right, bye everybody. See you in the funny papers. <laughs>